So you probably have heard of the Imperator 58 carat or the Ace 55 tomato. But what you probably don't know is what the numbers after the names stand for. No, it's not the date that they were created. And no, it's not due to some GMO process. It's actually something entirely different that is really going to shock you and amaze you. And I'm really excited to bring it to you all because this is actually a really common question we get. So let's get into it. So what do the numbers actually mean when it pertains to vegetables? I can think of quite a few right off the top of my head. You have, uh, you have Golden Bantam 12, you have Golden Bantam 17, you have Ace 55, you have Wisconsin 55 tomatoes, you have Heinz 255 tomatoes, you have Imperator 58 carrots, and you have, uh, you have Market Moore 76 cucumbers, you have Space Master 80 cucumbers, you even have Waltham 29 broccoli. So what do these numbers mean? And it's actually quite interesting. So around World War II, farmers began to streamline their process because the, the supermarket became the place where most uh, people shopped. And so in order to keep things consistent and in order to make it more, uh, you know, more shelf stable, more consistent with the supermarket model, farmers began breeding crops for consistency. And that consistency came around shape and size. So when you have an Ace 55 tomato, that is going to be the unit size that is going to dictate the packaging that is going to be used. Now, traditionally, this was done with uh, plastic bags, but because the, the bruising occurred on tomatoes and they got soft spots and broke, plastic bags were phased out and they moved to more of a plastic clamshell. Well, a plastic clamshell has to fit around a tomato to keep it safe and secure. And that means that they needed to universalize a sizing model. So how did that happen? By naming the varieties. So as a farmer, if I want to, uh, if I want to guarantee the size of my tomato and I wanna grow this specific size for this specific market, I'm going to pick that size. So farmers, a lot of times would grow a 55 size tomato. This right here is an Ace 55 tomato, very consistent. And as a person who created packaging, I could create a 55 size case. And that would mean that, uh, that you would get um, the, a, a good fit in that case every single time with an Ace 55 tomato. Similar tomatoes would be a Wisconsin 55 tomato. Also, you have things like a Heinz 255 tomato. These are tomatoes that will fit into a 55 size case. Another thing is Imperator 58 carrots. You know, these things all are actually unit sizes. You can think of probably a lot more. Blue Lake 274 bean. 274 beans of these Blue Lakes, or 274 of these Blue Lake beans will fit into a case size. And it's obviously a rough average, but it is a way to streamline and to make things more universal so that farmers and people that create packaging can, can coexist without the inconsistencies. And I find it really interesting. And so this came around the era when the industrialization and the, um, the mechanization of the farm was occurring. Now, a lot of these varieties are considered heirlooms. And why might you ask are they considered heirlooms? Well, that's because we have since really kind of phased out this type of, uh, this type of naming system. We still give names to vegetables that have numbers. And a lot of people um, you know, that do smaller, th uh, smaller scale stuff still kind of uh, keep, hold true to this sizing model. But now it's gotten far more advanced. But this type of method really did work for, uh, for that era. And so you'll find that a lot of these tried and true varieties are ones that were grown you know, around World War II and kind of came on the scene, became very popular and loved. But they, you know, they, they have since just became kind of a home staple because they've been replaced by you know, more dependable varieties or more, even more consistent varieties. And you know, the, the technology has changed to, uh, to accommodate a lot of different um, types and varieties as well. And that is also why many of our heirlooms have been pushed by the wayside because once farmers found the Ace 55 tomato to be a very consistent size, a very consistent shape, it had very good, uh, you know, very good shelf life and could be fit into packaging. Some of your more uh, traditional, traditional uh, heirloom varieties like your Abe Lincoln's or your, you know, your Black Crim or your 
yeah, I don't know, your Polish linguisa, you pick a, a variety, a really old variety. A lot of those were pushed by the wayside. Your classic beef steaks and things like that were lost to things like this because growers simply could not, they could not guarantee a consistent shape and size from those other varieties. And so these kind of took center stage. They're still very fun to grow. They're still very delicious. And that's why they're still grown today. But it is very interesting as to the numbers behind the names. And so few people understand that. And I thought it'd be fun to bring it to you all. So I know it's not necessarily uh, probably the most educational thing you've probably heard from this channel. But at least I, I thought it'd be really interesting. And so hopefully you did as well. I do think that it's important to understand uh, the reasons why things are the way that they are. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. Like this video if you did enjoy. Share with your friend if you found it interesting and you think they would as well. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.